Hello everyone, and welcome to the In-Depth Engineering Spring Semester Capstone presentation. My name is Andrew Skavikas, and I will be presenting our project, TRAIN, Track Real-Time Artificial Intelligence Neural Network. Before I begin, I'd like to introduce our team from In-Depth, uh, Bill Matuzek, John Vernaglia, and David Helms. And from URI, uh, Giles Lanaway, computer engineer, myself, Andrew Skavikas, electrical engineer, and Eric Gardner, computer engineer. A quick view overview of in-depth engineering. It's a small business located in Middletown, Rhode Island. Uh, they do most of their work for the Department of Defense, building real-time, fault-tolerant, highly available, mission-critical software systems. Uh, now into our project. Uh, our project starts with data collection uh, in two forms, AIS signals, automatic identification system, uh, which are signals sent by marine traffic, and ADSB, automatic dependent surveillance broadcast signals, which are sent by aircraft. The next part of our project uh, involves machine learning. Uh, using the path taken from the received data, we can figure out what type of ship or aircraft uh, we're tracking based on the course information. Uh, we have done this using a predictive neural network. The last part of our project uh, is plotting the ship path. Uh, we use a geoplotter to be able to visualize the path of tracked vehicles to view anomalies such as this one here, where a ship turned off the transponder before it entering an illegal fishing zone. So the anticipated best outcome. Over the past spring semester, we have achieved the anticipated best outcome described in the fall. Uh, we can collect, store, and decode data. Uh, we use a neural network to classify the ships, and we plot the path of aircraft and boats. We will also be covering each of these sections in more detail later in the presentation. Key accomplishments, as I said before, uh, we have a functional AD, AIS, ADSB, data parser, machine learning models, signal receivers, and we also have a geoplotter for aircraft and marine traffic. Economic impact. Uh, the economic impact of a project is mostly for law enforcement. Uh, it can, uh, can be used to prevent smuggling, illegal fishing, and territorial violations. Next, I will be getting into my portion of the project, uh, AIS and ADSB signal receiver. So first, I'm going to discuss the equipment uh, used in the AIS and ADSB signal receivers. So for AIS, uh, we have an antenna, uh, the QKAO26, which is an AIS signal receiver, uh, which can decode the signals, uh, and a GPS receiver. Uh, for the ADSB, uh, it's not that much different from the AIS. We're going to require a different antenna because it's a different frequency bandwidth uh, and flight aware receiver, which can decode the ADSB data, much like the QKA026. Uh, for data collection, we have micro SDs, which hold operating system information for the Raspberry Pis uh, and hard drives to hold large amounts of data. We also have an ABS plastic container uh, and polyurethane uh, to hold the all the components outside so that they do not get ruined by weather. The AIS signal receiver uh, it comes in three parts: uh, an antenna which can cover about 160 megahertz in a range of about 155 to 165 megahertz. Uh, the AIS receiver, the QKA026, which has an AIS and GPS receiver, which is good because we need both of those informations, uh, and a microcontroller, uh, which is a Raspberry Pi, which can control the data flow. Uh, so data collection, this starts for your AIS with OpenCPN, uh, which can monitor our bearing, lat long, time, the speed, course, and identification of the boat. Uh, so this is all the data that we need, um, but it was a little bit difficult for us to work with the data, so we decided to move on to working with just the raw data. So here we show that you can hook up a serial connection between the AIS receiver and the Raspberry Pi. 
uh, and using that we can get AAS signals and GPS signals to come through and then using a separate program in our case it was data logger uh, we can take this raw data and we can parse it into a CSV file which is much easier for our geoplotter and our machine learning network neural network to use this is a, our full receiver so you can see the two Raspberry Pis A and B A is the ADSB receiver so you can see that's hooked up to the flight aware dongle uh, and B is the AIS receiver uh, the hard drive obviously C and then the ABS plastic container and polyurethane foam which houses all the components uh, keeps them stable especially in bad weather when we get lots of wind ADSB data collection uh, so we use FlightAware which is an internet based data collection software uh, and so it's very easy to, to transfer data and to look at it in large batches such as you can see here uh, but to control raw data uh, we needed to use an API uh, to pull certain queries about certain aircraft path and information next speaker is Eric Gardner For AIS data, data parsing involves keeping the required data fields listed here and shrinking them down into smaller CSV files for data preparation. We do a similar thing with the collected JSON and CSV ADSB files. We store them again in shrunken CSV files. The JSON files required us to read in the files line by line as opposed to all at once for the CSV files because many of the files were broken. For data preparation in both AIS and ADSB data, our data is normalized using min-max normalization. It is then resampled so that each AIS data point is taken every 10 minutes for a contiguous 12 hour period. And for ADSB, each data point is taken every five minutes for a contiguous six hour period. The missing data are then interpolated using cubic splines and then stored in NumPy arrays. Then we one hot encode the labels for easier fit into the neural network. And finally split the data into trained test and validation data sets. For both parts of our project, a one dimensional convolutional neural network was selected for classification as it has the unique ability to preserve the spatial relationships needed for classification of time series data. Unlike regular neural networks, a 1D CNN has a convolutional layer and a pooling layer before the fully connected layers. As an input to our project, the model takes a 3D NumPy array of time series data. For AIS, it takes latitude, longitude, speed, and course with respect to time. And for ADSB, it takes latitude, longitude, and altitude with respect to time. Our model is then programmed using the Keras API and the TensorFlow libraries, standard libraries for machine learning in Python. It then spits out predictions for classification. For AIS, it predicts ship type, and for ADSB, we have two models, able to predict species, so whether it's a land plane or a helicopter, and type, which is a more specific uh, field, like for a 747 or an A20N. We then tuned hyperparameters using accuracy and loss curves from our verification and test data and validated the results of our data training using confusion matrices. For the ML portion of the AIS neural network, a GUI was created to be run on the Raspberry Pi. This allows the user to select a file of the daily collected signals. After choosing the file, it prepares the data in the way I showed earlier and alerts the user to when it's done, how many ships were detected, and whether any ship types were detected. It also creates three separate NumPy files containing the input arrays, the label types, and the MMSI numbers. Next, the user can select the AIS model button, which will make the three files go into the ML model. Because it's being run on the Raspberry Pi, the model had to be converted from a TensorFlow model to a TensorFlow Lite model in order to function efficiently. It will then alert the user if any suspicious ships were found. And if there were, it will output a text file with a list of the suspicious ships and alert the user on the GUI. Finally, the user can plot a pie chart of whichever MMSI they want to see the confidence of.
Here that pie chart can be seen with a list of all the ship types that can be seen. You will now hear from my teammate Giles Lanaway about the 3D map plotting portion of our project. Thank you, Eric. Hello everyone, my name is Giles Lanaway and I will be talking about our project's data collection and plotting functions. As Andrew mentioned before, we receive AIS messages through a vertical polarized antenna. The snapshot of code on the left is a small representation of how we read this incoming data through the serial port of the Raspberry Pi. All signals were read character by character and added to a string until the entire message was read. These strings were then stored into a CSV as seen in the picture on the right. Indices 186 and 192 are of more importance to us. These are the encoded AIS messages. Early on in the project, we used a separate program to isolate these AIS messages. This file was then run through a different program, which decoded them using Pi AIS. However, in the project's current state, we have modified the data logger file to record only AIS messages and decode the complete serial port string before storing it into a CSV. For ADSB signal logging, we chose a very different strategy. Instead of using a program to read serial port data, we used a variety of FlightAware products. These included the FlightAware antenna, ProStick as seen on the slide, and the FlightAware Raspbian OS PiAware. These three products allowed us to seamlessly perform many of the same data collection tasks as the AIS component of our project. The main difference was the data we recorded was stored onto FlightAware's server. To access our data, we needed to use FlightAware's API, Arrow API. Here is an example JSON file containing a series of ADSB messages. As you can see, these JSON files can get quite congested. Using our ADSB parser, we isolated the legacy fields of importance to us seen here. For our project's AIS and ADSB geoplotters, the process of preparing the data was the same. All data points referring to a specified MMSI or ICAO were isolated into their own CSV. From here, another program writes the isolated data into a template created using PyKML. The completed template is stored as a KML file as seen on the right. The user can then import these files into Google Earth to see the ship or aircraft's recorded track. The image on the right is the previously shown KML file imported into Google Earth. The purpose of the AIS GUI was to combine all working parts of the project's AIS components. Intuitively, the record data button starts a new thread that executes the data logger program. This additional thread allows the user to work with the other buttons on the GUI while recording data. The stop recording button ends this thread. Once we have created a new file containing some AIS message data, the other buttons can be used. First, the user must specify which file they want to use as the source as well as the ship MMSI they want to take a look at. Next, the user can press the isolate button to store all references to the declared MMSI in a new CSV. All that's left is to press the generate KML button, which creates the file to be imported into Google Earth. As we come to the end of our presentation, we would like to thank our technical directors, Bill Matuzak, David Helms, and John Vernaglia. It was a pleasure working with you all. We would also like to thank our URI capstone director, Dr. Harish Sunak, and consulting technical director, Alex DiPatrio. Thank you.